News 46 is brought to you by Affiliated Chiropractic and Physical Therapy, specializing in comprehensive accident rehabilitation. Our goal is to create the individual treatment plan that will restore your health and end pain. Come in for your free consultation. Call 775-727-8900. Pahrump's number one media source for local news, weather, and sports. Good evening. It's Tuesday, February 1st, 2011. I'm Rick Vale. And I'm Rhonda Van Winkle for News 46. Topping our news this evening, Judge Robert Lane talks to News 46 about the process of replacing the position that is now open after the passing of a district court judge, John Davis, who recently lost his battle with cancer. Uh, we just learned the other day that uh, Judge Davis is passing and the county is supposed to give notice to the state that we're now lacking one judge and then uh, the, the state will notify the state bar who will then notify all the attorneys in the state. Uh, you have to be an attorney and you have to be attorney for 10 years to be a district court judge and they'll note the state bar will notify all the attorneys that meet those qualifications. Whoever wants to can then apply for the position. Let's say 50 attorneys apply, they'll then put a committee together of 12 people who will narrow that down from from 50 to three people, they'll send those three to the governor and then the governor will appoint one of the three to be the new district court judge. And my understanding is the whole process takes three to four months to do. And then uh, I believe the judge who's appointed then has to run for re-election. And I don't know if that would be a year from now in 2012 or in 2014, which is when Judge Davis was up for election. Can I ask you, are you absorbing the cases right now that would normally go to Judge Davis? Yeah, I'm pretty much handling all of Judge Davis's caseload in Pahrump, and then the state is appointing senior attorneys up in Hawthorne, Goldfield, and Tonopah to cover his northern uh, caseload. What was he like to work with? Very private, very quiet. Uh, he had, when he and I would run into each other for the last 10 years, uh, it would normally be polite banter, how are you, how's your family, how's your hiking going, how's my family, and just polite conversation. Uh, he was a private man in his death. He wants a private funeral, and he was the same way when he was alive. He, with me, uh, he didn't talk much about what's going on with his family or anything else or his health. Um, I learned from the same sources everybody else did, what, you know, that he was dying and when he died. And uh, he was very private with me. I'm, I ho hopefully with his immediate family and his friends, he was open. But we were just acquaintances that worked together. Thank you. Thank you. Nye County School District Superintendent Dr. Rob Roberts gives News 46 an update regarding the new Mance Elementary School construction. Mance Elementary School is uh, well on its way to be completed and it's uh, uh, within budget and it should be completed by June of uh, this year. And we're very excited about that. Uh, the school is built to hold 650 students and uh, we'll have all the latest energy efficiency um, um, built into the school and it's, it's a green school. Um, it allow us to move the children from the current Mant School, which is across from Walmart uh, and off that busy corner, uh, as well as incorporate most of the students, or a lot of the students, from uh, Mount Charleston Elementary School. They will be spread throughout the uh, throughout Pahrump, um, but um, the I think we have tentatively zoned about 100 students for that area, and there are 420 students in Mount Charleston presently. So the uh, the other 300. Uh, and 20 would be divided up between uh, Mount Char between uh, J.G. Johnson, Floyd, and uh, Haven Elementary Schools. And uh, how many students will m the new man's be able to accommodate? Uh, well, we, we hope uh, 650 students. That's that's the plan at this time. That w hopefully, we won't fill it up right away. You know, we, you know, if we get to 600, that'll be good first year. Tell us some of the things that they're going to have uh, at the new man's elementary school that are going to be uh, new. That uh, new technologies, um, new. Um, equipment? Well, uh, to start off with, we'll have a multi-purpose room and a, a full operational kitchen that, and um, a stage, performing stage in that room where the students uh, have the opportunity to, to go in during their music session and sing and perform and dance and all those other kind of fun things inside. Uh, currently a match, you know, they have to walk from trailer to trailer and when it's hot outside or windy or rainy, you know, they're exposed to all those elements. Um, we will have a built-in computer lab we are also installing uh, four computers in, in each classroom for the students to use. Um, we, uh, and we will have the um, smart boards and computer uh, instruction uh, that the uh, teachers will be able to
better deliver their uh, lessons to the students. And also, there's a voice enhancement uh, equipment installed in each classroom that allows a teacher to wear a microphone around their neck and speak in a normal tone, and all the students in the classroom will be able to hear it. You know, if, if you've been a teacher for a long time, your voice is pretty worn out uh, from trying to reach little Johnny in the back of the room. This way, the, even students that are hearing impaired uh, have the ability to, uh, to hear what's being said. I know that uh, the issue of budget cuts is um, on the table, but this was actually part of a bond measure to rebuild this school. So this is actually not out of the same fund. That's correct. A lot, a lot of people don't quite understand, well, how can you be building new schools and at the same time reducing your staff and, and having budget problems? Uh, well, in 2007, the voters of Knight County School District passed a bond issue that is specifically for the replacement of old schools or the construction of new schools, renovation for roofs and, and heaters, you know, the elements, those kinds of things. And it cannot be used for operational money. It's not paying for salaries. It's not, not paying your light bill or water bill. It's strictly for the construction. And those bonds should be paid off between 20 and 30 years. And it'll be a permanent uh, facility for these students for, for decades in Nye County. And it's an investment in the uh, youth of, uh, of this community. Well, keep us updated on MANS. And thanks yeah. so much for speaking with us. Be happy to. Thank you so much. Coming up right after the break, we'll tell you where the indoor swap meet will be relocating to, and RSVP is looking for volunteers. We'll have all this and more right after this break. Please keep it here. News 46 is brought to you by Affiliated Chiropractic and Physical Therapy, specializing in comprehensive accident rehabilitation. Our goal is to create the individual treatment plan that will restore your health and end pain. Come in for your free consultation. Call 775-727-8900. Welcome back to News 46. The Pahrump Event Center Indoor Swap Meet has seen its last days. But good news is on the horizon for bargain shoppers. Well, uh, uh, several weeks ago we found out that the swap meet was uh, shutting its doors permanently and uh, uh, talking to a few of the vendors over there, I found that a lot of them need a new home and they really don't have a place to uh, operate their own little businesses here in Pahrump. And at one time, we started off this, uh, our big uh, furniture store at this little office right here, about 1,400 square feet. Uh, it was the only thing that was available. We were lucky it was available. Uh, we have approximately 60 to 70 uh, little mom and pop uh, little stores and, and uh, vendors, um, arts and crafts dealers that uh, aren't going to have a place to sell their products. And so, uh, being that we have a, a very large furniture store across the street and we have this one over here, it's almost 10,000 square feet, um, I felt it would be a good idea to uh, offer this space uh, to the group of vendors and uh, open up a, the, mar the Pahrump Marketplace uh, is what we plan on uh, calling this. Um, we, uh, like I said, we actually planned on uh, 65 vendors in here so we can make a little shopping center for many uh, Pahrump folks to come on in. And uh, the items we are uh, intending to show here are arts and crafts and uh, homemade products and just uh, thousands and thousands of items available for uh, Pahrump residents to come take a look at. Uh, this is still in the planning process. Uh, we're waiting for uh, state, county, and, and town approval. We got to jump through a lot of red tape uh, uh, thrown at us by the, uh, the town and the state and um, we're going to have a meeting uh, Saturday night at 6 p.m. to discuss a lot of the issues that recently came uh, about uh, mostly through the taxing officials and, and it's something we, we're very, very hopeful to make happen here in Pahrump. I know that uh, we're talking about the Prump Indoor Swap Meet that is on Calvada at the Prump Event Center. That's going to be closing down, I believe, uh, this weekend's its last weekend. So when we don't have an idea of when this might open up here? Uh, well, pending approval, we could actually get this up and running in about 10 to 14 days. It's it's a lot of, it's going to be a, a lot of work to do that. Um, you know, it's all a matter of all the individuals pulling the proper permits, making sure everything's legal. The last thing I want to do is invest a lot of time and money in getting this uh, thing up and running and just have it shut down because we didn't follow the rules. 
You're also thinking about having a full restaurant in here too as well? Uh, yes, there are uh, several uh, restaurateurs that we are uh, entertaining uh, for uh, just a grill or just maybe a little snack bar. We have not determined that at this point, but uh, something's still in the planning stages. That is a little farther down the road. Uh, those kind of things would take a good month to two months to, to uh, achieve. Speaking of that, the furniture showcase has moved across the street on Highway 372 here. The rest of the store is closing down and moving over there, and I see that you're remodeling the inside of this. Well, we, we did a complete remodel of the home gallery furniture, and actually the furniture showcase is actually owned by the home gallery furniture store, and um, we have so much space across the street, almost 20,000 square feet. We didn't see the need to rep, uh, duplicate a lot of our products at both locations. Although we've been here for over 10 years, um, uh, we hate to give up the location. It's a great location, um, but, uh, you know, 20... Uh, 22,000 square feet is pretty sufficient for us over there. We're doing quite well, and, and uh, I, th I felt like it would be a good opportunity for a lot more individuals to open up the marketplace here. Regional Director of RSVP, Jan Lindsay, stopped by News 46 to give us an update on the volunteer positions they now have available. The Retired and Senior Volunteer Program, and uh, we are mainly in Pahrump, but we are also reaching out to Amargosa and Beatty. And we provide transportation to seniors for medical appointments. And when we have enough drivers, we also take people shopping to the bank, library, lawyers, that kind of thing. And um, we have Respite for the Caregiver, a fairly new program that is really taking off. And what this is, we have volunteers go into a home to allow the caregiver of the family to go out for up to four to five hours at a time. And this way, when there is a reliable uh, respite provider in the home, the caregiver doesn't have to worry about their loved one. And this is so vital because of the, the impact it makes on the person that's with them 24 hours a day to have a little time off but not feel like they're neglecting the person. Exactly. And the caregiver, who is 24-7, usually feels guilty the first time they go out. And they have lunch with a friend and so on, but after one or two trips, they realize how important it is for them to get a break because they're more able to care for their loved one when they feel rested and relaxed. Really? Recharge the batteries there. Exactly, yes. And I think everyone needs to, we all know that we need to do that from time to time. And so it's a very good program. It, RSVP is, how many years has RSVP been around? Since 1973, and it is nationwide. And we are with... Rural Nevada RSVP, and so we are all over the state. We have um, five respite providers here now. We have 13 drivers, two telephone tree people, and we also have support from the Sheriff's Auxiliary and uh, people in the library and fire and rescue are part of our volunteer group as well. And volunteers are so vital to this program. Absolute, absolutely. We could not exist without the volunteers, and right now I am looking for drivers. So um, we, can, we can spread out our assistance a little better if we have more drivers than clients, and right now the balance is tipped the other way. We have almost 40 clients and 13 drivers, so we do need some people to uh, assist us with driving. It could be once a week, twice a week, whatever the person feels they can afford time-wise, and there is a stipend for drivers over 55. It's up to $20 a month, paid quarterly. Doesn't sound like a lot, but every quarter you can get a $60 check, so it's a help. And for a person who needs to use the services for RSVP and for these positions, um, voluntary positions for drivers, how can they contact you? They can call me at home, 751-5282. The message machine is always on because I'm not always home. I'm on the road a lot now. And um, while we're on RSVP, I would like to say thank you to Butch and thank you to Nye County Commissioners and the Town Board of Pahrump. It's been wonderful having them support us because this allows us to keep the program going in southern Nye County for this year. Such an important program. Yes, yes, it truly is. Thank you so much, Dan. Thank you. Bye -bye. Coming up after the break, we'll tell you about a cyberbullying seminar held recently. And the spaghetti dinner fundraiser that went very well. Also, we'll have the results of the Screen Actors Guild Awards. All this and more coming up right after this break. Keep it here.
News 46 is brought to you by Affiliated Chiropractic and Physical Therapy, specializing in comprehensive accident rehabilitation. Our goal is to create the individual treatment plan that will restore your health and end pain. Come in for your free consultation. Call 775-727-8900. Welcome back to News 46. It's no secret that cyberbullying has become a big problem. But how does the law address it? A seminar was held recently on just that. We're here at Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue, and we're going to speak to licensed clinical social worker Thomas Bulbrook about his cyberbullying presentation today. Cyberbullying, actually, as some people may not even realize, cyberbullying is the use of technology to harass, intimidate, and basically just annoy people using that technology, such as the Internet, cell phones, text messaging, and things like that. Almost like you might think of the traditional playground bullying, but this is online. You are also a social worker with your own group, which is Insightful Living as well as Monte Vista Hospital. Who's sponsoring today's presentation? Today's, uh, today's presentation is a collaboration between myself and Monte Vista Hospital. Monte Vista was kind enough to go ahead and secure the site and to do the invitations and provide materials. So they are the primary sponsor for our event today. Who do we have invited to this? We have people from the local middle school here. We have some of the firefighters that were kind enough to come from the station. We also have people from the general community, from probation and parole and so forth. And we're teaching them about this so that they can look for signs of this or how better to deal with it? If I can get people to walk away from the presentation and just begin a social dialogue about what is this? What's happening with our children? What are the vulnerabilities? What do we watch for exactly? Just to have people aware. We need to be asking these questions to our kids. What are their online experiences like? Are they being harassed online through venues such as Facebook, MySpace, text messaging type of things, even game systems in some cases? So it's to raise social awareness. Cyberbullying is there anybody really cracking down on that? Um, it's form of harassment that you would probably report to the sheriff's department or to your school uh, administrators. Uh, tell me about that. The onus of responsibility with much of the, uh, the statutes that come into place really puts it on the school system. And they have done re really a terrific job of, uh, some of you may be familiar with the Green Valley High School incident with Burn Book and some of the kids that were suspended because of their participation in that with harassing kids and staff. Uh, so the schools have really kind of taken on the onus of responsibility for this. The laws are changing, and there's a lot of legislation to try and get some more uh, just the consequences for this type of harassment with our kids. And if you're being bullied and you can't locate the person or don't know who they are, what would you do in that case? Uh, people need to document what's happening. Keep those emails. Keep those text messages. Make a record of what's going on. For goodness sakes, talk to your parents and let the local schools know what's happening. And report it to the authorities as well, especially in the cases where there's threats of physical violence. Someone's going, threatening to hurt someone else. Yes, absolutely. And for more information on cyberbullying, who can they contact? Well, they're more than welcome to contact myself, okay? I can give you my number, and that's 702-686-2069. They can also look, like, look up Insightful Living Incorporated online. I have a website that's there. They can contact me through there as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye. Now, if you are being bullied via Internet, cell phone, or in any other manner, you can contact and report it to the Nye County Sheriff's Office at 751-7000. You said that when you were in Florida, there was a case where somebody died because yeah, of this? Yeah, absolutely. A, a woman whose daughter had been, um, who was annoyed with a neighboring girl, created a false account and began harassing the neighboring girl to the point where she actually committed suicide. Very so sad. both the mother and the daughter were arrested for, you know, participating in that event. Wow, that's yeah. terrible. So make sure you call 751-7000 if you're having any problems like that. Well, a fundraiser for the family who were victims of a structure fire was held this past weekend. News 46 was there to see how it all went. So far, very well. It's been constant pace. People come in, they leave, and then other people come in. It's very nice. I'm hoping that we run out of sauce and pasta because that's my goal. <laughs> you made a lot, I know that. Yes, I took six days and made a whole bunch of sauce and got some pasta. and We have a whole bunch of baked goods here as well. You got all the baked goods, donated everything, so we're hoping that we're going to um, reach our goal, which your daughter was talking a minute ago about. What is your goal? 
Um, well, according to my daughter, she wants $18,000. I would just be happy if we ran out of all of our pasta and all of our sauce because then um, that would tell me that the community, of course, cares and that they actually heard our voices saying that. And hello, we're out here. Yeah, wonderful. I, I got a chance to speak to your kids, and they're having an adjustment, but they're looking forward to a mobile home that Grandma looked at recently. Yes, where that unfortunately a mobile home wasn't a go would have cost about ten to fifteen thousand dollars to fix that mobile home up. But we are looking for any ones that we can pull off a lot and put back onto our property. So if anybody's seeing this right now and they have a mobile home, what are you looking for? Um, just something that's good, has good windows, not going to need a lot of repairs on it once we do get it, and then of course price is negotiable. Wonderful. And how many rooms are you looking for? Three bedrooms. Three bedrooms. And so people can call you for that. And, of course, we're going to give everybody the Meadows Bank information. Bank account number is 20-3000-1511. Wonderful. And under the name of Joy Smith, which is your mother. And people can donate directly into that bank account as well as the yard sale coming up. Yes, we're hoping to get some items. If people in the community have items that they don't no longer want and they don't mind donating them to us so that we can use them into a yard sale. I'm talking to some family members of ours so we can have it centrally located at, a, um, at an establishment and use their entire parking lot and get everything going from there. I know that a lot of the items you're going to be using for your new home, so if they have some furniture items, you are looking for them as well. And phone number for more information. 702-505-2899. How are you guys doing today? Good. Awesome. So we're having a spaghetti dinner. How's it going? Pretty good Pretty so good. far. We're almost making a goal. Oh, yeah. What's your goal? Um, about like 18,000 or 1,800. 1,800? Is that what it is? <laughs> I think 18,000 is a better goal. <laughs> <laughs> so how old do you guys give your ages? 12. 8. I know, Draven, you just celebrated a birthday. And your brother and sister, yeah, you're how half-sister. Um, did you help mom with uh, the bake sale today and spaghetti? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So where do you guys go to school? Haven Elementary. Same place. Fifth. Are you looking forward to the new home? Yes, very much. Totally. Really? Mm. It's going to be nice, huh? If Grandpa sees us, uh -huh. hi. All right, it's time. They are adorable. Sorry, no, it's I okay. Stop you. <laughs> they were adorable. It's funny thing about kids is that when they laugh, you can't help but laugh. I know. <laughs> They're so resilient, aren't they? Yeah. From everything they've gone through, they're smiling and happy. Oh yeah, it's all good. You know, especially when you got spaghetti dinner. True. <laughs> That's our favorite, right? That's spaghetti. Right. Folks, it's time now for Entertainment This Week with Whitney Smith. This is Whitney Smith with Entertainment This Week. The 47th Annual SAG Awards aired last night. SAG, which stands for Screen Actors Guild, is an American labor union representing over 200,000 film and television principal performers and background performers worldwide. Here is what was awarded in film. Outstanding performance by a cast in a motion picture, The King's Speech. Outstanding performance by a male actor in a leading role, Colin Firth, The King's Speech. Outstanding performance by a female actor in a leading role, Natalie Portman, Black Swan. Outstanding performance by a male actor in a supporting role, Christian Bale, The Fighter. And outstanding performance by a female actor in a supporting role, Melissa Leo, The Fighter. In television, for outstanding performance by an ensemble in a drama series, Boardwalk Empire. Outstanding performance by an ensemble in a comedy series, Modern Family. Outstanding performance by a male actor in a drama series, Steve Buscemi, Boardwalk Empire. Outstanding performance by a female actor, in a drama series, Juliana Margulies, The Good Wife. Outstanding performance by a male actor in a comedy series, Alec Baldwin, 30 Rock. Outstanding performance by a female actor in a comedy series, Betty White, Hot in Cleveland. Best male actor in a TV or miniseries was Al Pacino, You Don't Know Jack. And best female actor in a TV or miniseries was Claire Danes for Tempo Grandin. And the winner of the 47th Annual Lifetime Achievement Award was Ernest Borgnine. This is Whitney Smith with Entertainment This Week. Well, thank you very much, Whitney. So, Rhonda, did you enjoy the very breezy, blustery day we've had today? No. <laughs> Messes up my hair. Yeah. I didn't get to go walking. 
Well, you're not going to go walking tomorrow either. At least you're not going to want to because it's going to be so bloody cold. It's not even oh, funny. Great. Don't go anywhere. We've got <laughs> your weather advisory and your seven-day forecast right after this break. Local diets are very important in maintaining a healthy body. For more information, you can visit their website at NevadaDairyCouncil.org. Hey everyone, welcome back to News 46. We have a wind advisory in effect. The wind advisory remains in effect until midnight tonight. Sustained north winds of 20 to 30 miles per hour with gusts between 40 and 50 miles per hour will be common across the advisory area. Now the advisory area pretty much consists of everywhere in southern Nevada and parts of southern California. So anywhere from Armorgosa Valley on over to Las Vegas, you're going to be very careful while you're driving, especially in high-profile vehicles. It will be very difficult with all this wind gusting and blustering about. Now, looking at today, it's going to be, it was partly cloudy out there, mostly sunny, a high of 52 degrees. Winds north-northeast, 22 miles per hour. Now, that's the average. We're getting gusts even higher than that, so again, be very careful when you're out there and you're driving around. Now, our pressure holding steady at 30.09. Sunrise was at 6.45 a.m. and a record high was 75 degrees back in 2003. Now looking at tonight, it's expected to also be pretty much clear out there with a low of 25 degrees. Very cold stuff. Remember the five P's of Pahrump. Your pets, your pumps, your plants, your pipes, your pools. You don't want any of this stuff freezing up on you. Make sure you've got everything well insulated and covered and blanketed and all the other important stuff. Now. Winds coming out of the northeast at 18 miles per hour, again an average. Until midnight tonight, we are going to have gusts upwards of 40 miles per hour, according to our wind advisory, so be very careful. Sunset was at 5.10 p.m., and our record low was 12 degrees back in 1994. Looking at our seven-day forecast, tomorrow is expected to be windy yet again, though no wind advisory has been put into effect. Gusts up to 20 miles per hour are expected. Our high will be 47 degrees. It's not a typo, 47 degrees, the lowest high of the week, very cold. Make sure you're wearing your jackets. A low of 21, even colder. Make sure you're watching out for all your five peas of Pahrump. Now, Thursday, going to expect to be clear. The winds are going to die down on us quite a bit. A high of 56 and a low of 29. Friday, heading into the weekend, clear skies with a high of 65 and a low of 35. Now, moving into the weekend, we're expecting partly cloudy skies across the board. With a high of 69 degrees, it's going to be gorgeous out there on Saturday, so I insist you go out there and enjoy it. A low of 36. Sunday, still partly cloudy with a high of 67 and a low of 35. Monday, looking partly cloudy out there with a high of 64 and a low of 34. And rolling out our seven-day forecast, Tuesday, we'll have a high of 64 and a low of 34. Well, there it is. The new KPVM TV website went live as of 8 p.m. yesterday. That's right. The site is still under some construction, but the new facelift also has some new features. You can visit the News 46 page and watch full newscast. Or you can check out the What's On page to get a complete listing of schedules for all of our channels. You can also catch up on all your favorite KPVM TV shows. Great. Good job, Rick. Thank you very much. We're, it's some bugs to be worked out, but the bulk of the site is there and most of the content's in there, so feel free to log in and catch up on anything you may have missed over the past however long it's been since we started using <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> Sounds good. I'll be cruising through it. You go. All right, folks, I think that's, that's going to do it for this edition of News 46. I'm Rick Vale. And I'm Rhonda Van Winkle. From everyone up here on the Hill of KPVM, we wish you a safe evening, and we'll see you here again tomorrow night. Until then, good night, Prompt. Good night.